This is an exciting time to be interested in paleoanthropology. Substantial new evidence is emerging at a rapid rate, and techniques for analyzing it are becoming more and more sophisticated. But, as the arc of evolution becomes more apparent, the story also grows more complicated, murkier in the specifics, and there is no question that there will be more shocks in store. East Africa offers one instance. Between 1.2 million and 300,000 years ago, early people lived in the Olorgesailie region in what is now southern Kenya. The early humans' environments and animal encounters, the hand axe tools they created, and the difficulties they faced are all revealed by the excavations in Olorgesailie. In the East African Rift Valley, southern Kenya contains the sedimentary basin known as Olorgesailie. It has been extensively excavated for many years and is filled with numerous accumulated antiquities. Here, we'll look at artifacts discovered in this area that range from 1.2 million to 300,000 years old. The faunal remains, or fossilized animal bones, provide information on the kinds of creatures that once roamed the Olorgesailie region. While the sediments document environmental changes including lake growth or drying up, the presence of rivers, and volcanic eruptions. Recent discoveries at Olorgesailie provide evidence for the early emergence of complex and modern behaviors that may have been practiced by early Homo sapiens. These behaviors include the trade and long-distance transportation of resources, like obsidian, the use of pigments, and the potential creation of projectile points. It is suggested that complex behaviors started in Africa around the same time as Homo sapiens first appeared, because the appearance of these behaviors roughly correlates with the first known Homo sapiens fossil remains from Africa, which are dated to the same time frame. Obsidian is not typically found in the Olegasli site, therefore its discovery there is significant for that reason alone. It implies a system of movement and interaction outside the surrounding area because it had to have arrived from somewhere. What's the big deal, you might be asking? The key thing is that this kind of invention and adaptability demands relatively sophisticated cognitive skills, especially social networking, which by definition entails interaction between two or more groups of people. If you imagine that we humans evolved from chimpanzees, you will understand that chimpanzees cannot cross into another animal's territory without dying. Hence, entering another's domain required a valid justification such as trading. That raises an even more important issue in my opinion. Olorgesailie provides us with proof of contemporary human behavior, but who was engaging in all that acting? Absolutely, other places in the archaeological record associate Homo sapiens with both the Acheulean hand axes from the older sites, and the obsidian tools from the younger sites. But over time, Characteristics that were originally assumed to be unique to our species have been found to be more widespread in the genus Homo, whether we're talking about evidence that Homo nalidi deliberately buried its dead or other findings. Most likely, these contacts were forced upon us. Similar to today, natural calamities presented problems that were larger than the person. Early humans probably saw evidence of the benefits of cooperation in the form of earthquakes and shifting seasons and climates. It's possible that this shift to a more complicated set of behaviors, involving more advanced cognitive functioning and intricate social networks, was what separated our lineage apart from other early humans. Even though the obsidian, a volcanic rock, was not molded into anything, it had to originate from somewhere. Volcanic obsidian can be found 15 to 55 miles away based on the chemical composition of the surrounding area, which points to a possible transportation network. Manganese and arca colored rocks, which are ideal for producing black and red, respectively, were discovered at the location. Although it's difficult to pinpoint the precise reason for coloring the rocks, there is evidence to support their use. More questions arise when more information about early humans is discovered. Nonetheless, it is evident that transportation and communication were just as important then as they are now. Although we don't know what the coloring was used on, Archaeologists frequently view coloring as the source of sophisticated symbolic communication. These pigments may have aided people in communicating alliance membership and preserving relationships with distant communities, just as color is used today to indicate identification through clothes or flags. 
the Smithsonian research team started digging along the main volcanic ridge connecting the lowlands to Mount Olorgesailie after decades of discovery of thousands of animal fossils. The first Olorgesailie hominid fossil was discovered in a matter of months. Only the fragments of the brain case remained, and the fossil exhibits bite marks from predator teeth along the brow. It's possible that the hominin toolmakers always travel to the highlands, a safe haven away from the water, at night when wolves frequently prey on other humans around drinking holes. We've known for a long time about the hominins in Olorgesailie thanks to the artifacts they left behind. Given the age of the sediments, Homo erectus was most likely the species of hominin who created the tools. Olorgesailie's first hominid fossil was discovered in 2003. The fossil is made up of the left temporal bone, ear area, the frontal bone and brow ridge of the brain case, as well as various additional brain case fragments. It was once thought that this was a young Homo erectus, but that opinion is evolving. The human was small, with a cranial capacity, brain case size, of about 700 to 800 cubic centimeters. The fossil is thought to be about 900,000 years old and comes from a layer that is above, younger than a volcanic layer that is about 974,000 years old. A significant collection of hand axes that are from the same strata as the fossil are found around 1.5 kilometers to the east of the location of the discovery. This brow ridge, which was found in a brain case 62 years after studies there began, is the earliest human fossil from Olorgesailie that is known. This partially petrified skull cap, in the opinion of researchers John Hawkes and Lee Berger, is a perfect representation of Homo nalidi. He consequently queries if Homo nalidi produced the items found at this location, which is 3,000 kilometers or about 2,000 miles north of the caves where Homo nalidi was found. If Homo nalidi is there 250,000 years ago or so, and it's got hands that look like they're really well suited to making tools, what kinds of artifacts are associated with it? Are they making the same kinds of artifacts as Homo sapiens at the same time? In the past 20 years, many archaeologists have come to realize that modern behaviors like symbolism, innovation, and art did not suddenly appear as many had thought. This was believed to have made it possible for a significant change in brain organization and most likely the emergence of complex language. There was a lag between the appearance of anatomically modern humans and behaviorally modern people at the time since the oldest modern human fossils had been discovered in Africa, and were thought to date to about 100,000 years ago. This discrepancy in our history showed that we only attained modernity after leaving Africa as a species. However, there is growing opposition to this viewpoint. Not all academics agreed with the idea that modernity originated outside of Africa. This approach, according to some archaeologists, is the result of a serious underestimation of the breadth and complexity of the African archaeological record. They claim that elements of the human revolution may be found in African Middle Stone Age artifacts. The Middle Stone Age in Africa is distinguished by the lack or scarcity of massive cutting tools, and the availability of prepared core technology for the manufacture of complex points and blades. Importantly, the transition from the African Early to Middle Stone Age took place as Homo sapiens, our own species, was expanding across the continent. For this reason, it may be tempting to view the emergence of the earliest Middle Stone Age technology as a cultural indicator connected to the evolution and appearance of our own species, a smoking gun for proof of the modern human mind. Yet drawing that judgment so soon would probably be premature. At the Olorgesailie Basin, a great deal of artifacts and animal bones have been discovered, however few of these are hominid remains. Why has only one hominid specimen been discovered despite years of digging? And where were the hominins' homes? The location of the hominin fossil may hold the key to the solution. It was discovered in sediments close to the summit of a volcanic ridge called Lava Hump by the excavation crew. The lowland basin, where lakes and streams formerly developed, and the peaks of Mount Olorgesailie are connected by Lava Hump. Hominins may have hunted for food at lakesides or by streams left many artifacts, but perished in other locations because no evidence of them has been found in the sediments of the lowlands. Stone from highland regions, including Mount Olorgesailie, was utilized to craft stone tools. 
several hand axes have been discovered within a 5 km radius of volcanic outcrops in the highlands' oldest section of the Olorgesailly sequence, which dates back between 1.2 million and 900,000 years. Stone was mined from these outcrops. Up to 14 different types of volcanic rock were employed by early hominins, all of which have been located nearby. In reality, the team has discovered an actual quarry site that is thought to be about 990,000 years old, and was used by early hominins to break off enormous flakes of the volcanic rock. In this location, hominins tested the stone and started crafting hand axes out of the best pieces, those without mechanical defects. Right at the stone's source, tens of thousands of objects were discovered, the most of which were scraps from the manufacturing of tools. It is known that quartzite and obsidian formations occurred 48 kilometers and 18 kilometers, respectively, from the basin. Although though just a small number of tools constructed of these two kinds of rock have been discovered at Olorgesailly, they show that hominins traveled at least these lengths of distance. Because they could move around, the first humans of Olorgesailly were able to find food and water year-round and tolerate more extreme, infrequent changes in their environment. At Olorgesailly, hominins encountered a wide range of creatures. However, Olorgesailly's fossil fauna was distinct from that of several other East African fossil sites. At Olorgesailly, equids, or zebras, made up the majority of the fossilized mammals, although in other locations, bovids, or antelope-like species, predominated. Equus oldowayensis and Theropithecus oswaldi, two huge primates that were expert grazers, were also present in the strata where the hominid was discovered. Amphibians and other fossilized creatures lived around the lake and were attached to the grasses. The team has determined that early people frequented Hyena Hill frequently around 990,000 years ago. A significant number of stone tools and bones that were hacked and cracked open for sustenance by early humans have been discovered during the excavations at Hyena Hill. Hyenas were present among the fossilized creatures found in Hyena Hill as well. The scientists discovered an old den where hyenas had resided at a time when early people were also present in this region. The hyena skeletons were buried in tunnels beneath the ground, and the burrows were placed in a hill that was dug by a bulldozer, through sediment that was known not to contain any fossils or stone tools. The type of opportunities available to hominins in the Olorgesailly Basin are demonstrated by one excavation in the 990,000-year-old stratum. This is the elephant butchery site, where the bones of an extinct elephant, Elephas Reki, were discovered surrounded by more than 2,300 stone objects. Sharp flakes made up several of these objects. Cut marks on the elephant's rib, several of its vertebrae, and even the hyoid bone, where the elephant's tongue muscles attached indicate that these flakes may have been used to extract the elephant's flesh. The killing of the elephant took place when a tiny area of marshy vegetation, including reeds and other marsh plants, started to dry out. In order to create some of the flakes that were utilized in the butchery, hominins gathered stones from at least 17 different sources and made tools on the spot. The dig was expanded to include the neighboring area when the elephant bones were discovered. Further antelope and zebra butchery sites were ultimately discovered after initially fewer tools were discovered. Early people must have liked to hunt for animals to kill for meat and the nourishing bone marrow in this area of drying marshes. Animal species discovered at Olorgesailly and other sites in southern Kenya have altered over time as a result of varying environmental conditions. Baboon, elephant, zebra, pig, and hippopotamus species that had been common in the area became extinct. They were replaced by species that are still present in East Africa today and are closely related to them. At Olorgesailly during the Pleistocene, hominins experienced a variety of environmental changes. The scenery was always changing. An ancient lake existed in the basin at various intervals in time. Between deep and shallow, the lake's water level varied greatly. The lake occasionally covered the entire basin. At times, as the water level dropped, marshes or a dry grassland were left in its place. Occasionally, the basin had river channels instead of a lake. Volcanic ash that covered the entire landscape was one of the other environmental impacts. 
the numerous environmental difficulties faced by early humans over the previous one million years were caused by large-scale climatic changes between arid and moist, volcanic eruptions, and earthquakes. There were at least 16 significant environmental changes between 1.2 million and 400,000 years ago. These occurrences would have altered the basin's landscape, shifting or removing resources for hominins. Yet, after at least 12 of these occurrences, the next stratigraphic layer contains archaeological remains, including stone tools, suggesting that the toolmakers either survived the event or quickly recolonized the region. It appears that other mammalian species were less adaptable. Even though the Ologiseli hominin handaxe makers were able to survive significant environmental changes, the end of handaxe technology in the area occurred between 500,000 and 350,000 years ago, often at the same time as the extinction of other animal species. Some insights into the development of humans can be gained from studying the evolution and persistence of species with more adaptable, or versatile lifestyles. Although the hominins who made hand axes were prosperous for a considerable amount of time, the hand axe way of life also ended in the Ologiseli region by about 300,000 years ago. They were supplanted by others who produced toolkits that were more compact and varied. So, it appears plausible that the evolution of adaptable traits in both hominins and other animals was a crucial evolutionary response to such rapidly changing environmental conditions. But the question remains. Who made these tools? Was it Homo naledi or early Homo sapiens? The relationship between pre- and fully modern human fossils and early and middle Stone Age remains complicated and unclear elsewhere in Africa. Early Stone Age sites dating back before 400,000 years ago have parts like blades and prepared cores. These are linked to ancient human fossils rather than more recent ones, such those found in the Cave of Hearths. On the other hand, we also know that modern people continued to produce Acheulean big cutting tools long into the Middle Stone Age, as seen, for instance, at the 160,000-year-old site of Herto in Ethiopia. It does appear that the human revolution that gave rise to modernity never actually occurred because there is archaeological evidence that modern behaviors began to emerge much earlier, in cultures that existed before our own species. There are many older examples of every characteristic that has been traditionally used to distinguish modern humans from archaic humans, including culture, art, how the deceased are treated, decoration, and abstract symbols. Yet, the association between complex behaviors and hominin species between 500,000 and 160,000 years ago, when numerous species of hominins, not only modern humans, inhabited the African continent, is still not fully understood. In reality, revolution is easier to explain than gradual complex development. Suddenly, we have found a small-brained hominid that's primitive, that's not a human, not anything like one of those large-brained hominids. And it's sitting right there in the middle of southern Africa. Around it is a plethora of archaeology that we call the early Middle Stone Age. What if we got that narrative wrong? What if Homo naledi is doing all that? Now, probably a lot of archaeologists, the moment I say something like that, will go puce and grab their heart and say, but we know modern humans did that. And my colleagues and I say, well, show us the evidence.